Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we're doing something pretty special. We're featuring one of the winners of the Build Inside the Box Community Member Contest. There's more information about Build Inside the Box in the description. Mike Moore used the parts in the box to build a sump pump alarm. Want to see how he did it? Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Well, I consider myself fortunate enough to live in a place where I can have one of these. Basements do come with consequences. To steal a line from the movie Scarface, Say hello to my little friend, my sump pump. He's the only thing that stands between me and an indoor splash pad, or worse, an indoor swimming pool. See the black marks on the wall? Sure sign of basement flooding there. Over the years, I've learned a few things about sump pumps. For one, when the water exceeds this level here, bad things happen. I should probably have a high level switch of some sort to let me know when that happens. I also learned that sometimes the pump can try to pump, but the water doesn't go out. When this pipe here gets frozen as it leaves the house, flow doesn't go so well. Uh, the other time that it doesn't go so well is when the bottom of the pump rots out uh, and it can't actually pump it up. An interesting phenomenon that comes along with this is the pump keeps running, and as the water rises in the, in the pit here, uh, the pump warms it up quite a bit, bath water warm. So... If I had a temperature sensing device of some sort that could alert me, you know, rate of change of temperature, I could probably get an early warning before it exceeded this level here. What you're seeing here, yeah, that's mains voltage going down into the water. Um, probably be good to know if I had power going into the pump. And, uh, and of course, because inquiring minds want to know, um, I think it'd be nice to know the, the rate of cycling of the pump uh, at any given time, just because I'm, I'm curious that way. Sounds like an awesome project. Fortunately, I have a box full of cool stuff that can help me. Yeah. All right, let's see what's in the box. Some cool connectors. Ooh, Arduino Maker Zero. Power bank. Time of flight ranging sensors. Got my display. Hey, op amps, AR switch for me, and my thermometer. Should be a lot of fun. Let's see what we can do with this. The build inside the box kit conveniently has a temperature sensing IC, the MCP9701. So we'll take the sensor, hook it up to three wires, shove it all in some plastic tubing, seal it with a hot glue gun, shove it down in the water and see how it works. What could possibly go wrong? I also said I needed a switch. Photo transistor. That could be used as a switch. This is the TCST1103 photo transistor. I wanted a float switch. So, corks float. I'm fortunate enough to have a piece of three quarter inch thin wall PVC that uh, handily fits the cork. Probably wind up cutting a slot in the top of this to do a little photo interrupting with something like this. We'll see how it turns out. So we'll mount the sensor photo interrupter here and we'll cut a notch out of here so that way there won't be any plastic there when it's low when it gets to a certain height that plastic will raise and interrupt the uh, the beam and trigger the switch all right solder complete and of course yeah oops time to glue it on The next piece of the puzzle was my voltage detector circuit uh, and the part I had left to use was the 
the op amp, the MCP604. I tried a lot of complicated circuits and found that the one that worked best was the simple one. So the antenna here is this orange wire taped to the extension cord. Uh, the rest kind of makes sense, right? Power and then my V out. Power applied, power removed. That's almost a one volt swing. That's, that's pretty good. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! To make my voltage sensor circuit a little more application friendly, I'll be using one of my favorite uh, materials, strip board. Finished assembly in a protective case. All right, antenna connected to a power cord, connected to a power bar. Power is off. Power is on. Power's off. Power is on. The VLX53L0X time of flight ranging sensor is, a, is an I2C device. So the hookup's pretty simple. Um, there are lots of extra pins for some fancy features that the, basically the Adafruit library that I chose doesn't use. So, a little time for proof of concept. We'll run the library and we'll basically move it over the water and move it back and see if it detects different levels. For my assembly drawing, I decided to go with a little more graphic approach. Uh, this helped quite a bit. Um, as you can see over here, I kind of sort of forgot the resistors. Uh, so it did remind me of that and a couple of wires that uh, I was overlooking. I also used it to take notes. Uh, you can see some of the current readings, um, some of the wire colors, just to make sure I was getting it right. I even used it for my Wago connector plan. And this is way more organized than the finished product. My plan is to use this project box, but because as soon as I make my first hole in it, uh, I usually change my mind. I went ahead and cut out some of these blanks and that's what I'll be using. That way, when I do change my mind or I get the inspiration that makes me happy, I'll be able to fit it into the application. This is actually the mock-up or the one that I'll be using. So just the, the one output with the, uh, the buzzer output. Right now everything is held on to the PVC with double-sided 3M tape. Here's the completed project. I'll show you some component testing next. Let's go ahead and test out our AC detector. Seems to work. Time to test the high-level alarm. The water temperature alarms consisted of pouring buckets of hot water into the sump. We'll go ahead and pass on that. Unfortunately, the time of flight sensor that I had originally planned to use stopped working. So I had to use the one that uh, I did my prototyping with. I still have not uh, hit that point of inspiration with the case yet. So that's the project. I want to thank Element 14 for allowing me to play along. 
Uh, this was awesome. Uh, would I change anything? Oh yeah, everything. But that's just because that's how I'm wired. Thanks again. Some of you might be thinking, hold on there, buddy. Power banks have an auto off feature. What'd you do about that? Load bank. Yeah, but it solved it. Phase two will use a 555 timer though. All circuits ought to have one of those. Well, that was pretty cool, but what should you do next? The video is almost over. Want to talk to Mike about his project? Have you seen a project on the community you would like to see featured here? Let us know in the comments at the link in the description. So what are you waiting for? Go to the Element 14 community. I'll see you there.